The book, The Sovereign Individual, was written in 1997. It predicted the cyber economy, personalized media, non-state cryptographic peer-to-peer money, a handheld device that would combine a phone, camera, and a TV, and even governmental lockdowns from disease. My name's Darren. I want to walk you through the book, some of the predictions it's made, topics, this book covers. I've read it. I've come back to my notes on it time and time again. It's really helped shape my life to this point. And I really hope this video or this book brings you some value on the current age we're living in and how to prepare for it and succeed in the future. This is just an interpretation of the book itself, my notes on it. I mean, it's really going to help you read the actual book, listen to the actual author himself, deep dive into it because everybody interprets things differently. The Sovereign Individual was written by James Davidson and Lord William Rees Moog. I think I pronounced that right. In human history, we went from the hunting to agriculture, industrial, and now we are in the information age. There's four key mega political changes that are above the current governments we have. These are like all encompassing changes that affect everybody. These four key p- mega political changes that are having an influence on all of us are disease, climate, technology, and topography. This information age is called the fourth turning. He lists it as the year 2000. And remember, this book was written three to four years prior to that. This fourth turning will create the cyber economy and the greatest phenomenon of our future. We'll start to live as much online as we do offline. And remember, this book was written in 1997, so to say that back then was probably crazy. Future wealth will be measured by complete individual autonomy and independence. In the information economy, a job will be a task not a thing that you have. This changes the dynamic because with technology, planes, trains, borderless money, we will become customers who can choose our own jurisdiction. No longer will we be tax victims, we will be customers. You can see this already happening today in high tax jurisdictions such as California and Canada. Those who are paying the most aren't really getting the most back from the government. That that is a whole another topic. A good quote that I saw in this book that they quoted, I think it was from East Asia or something like that. It was, of all 36 ways to get out of trouble, the best way is to leave. And that's what we're seeing happening in these high tax jurisdictions. But downsizing this government is going to be extremely difficult. All that infrastructure we have in terms of jobs, in terms of money invested, it is really going to be hard to take all of that away in a quick amount of time. Just as we master technology, another innovation comes to blow it away. So we can see something like the MasterCard, Visa, banking system. We just mastered how to make sure fraud doesn't happen, how to tap it, how to get it in the hands of everybody. And now there is a new monetary technology out there that is going to just blow it away. And this is going to happen time and time again. With the technology, the world is abundant of information and you're going to need to figure out how to use it. This means the sovereign individual must master investment and entrepreneurship to keep up to this changing technology. There's no reason a thousand employees cannot be replaced by individual contractors. And we're really seeing this today with the amount of remote working going on. Me personally, I've been living this way for two years. It is that independence and autonomy that I am searching for. I haven't had a job in this amount of time, but I have been getting paid by multiple different companies along the way for my specific skill sets. And business on the internet is going to reduce discrimination. As trust in third parties rise, this will create a age of the independent contractor. There is no more bad luck on where you were born whether it's the third world in a rich community, the playing field is now online and we are global citizens now. Unfortunately, they predict people will react violently to those who took their jobs. And haven't we really already seen this in today's world, which is something as simple as automated checkouts, you know, the old South Park saying, they took our jobs. As technology comes into our lives, it's supposed to make things easier, cheaper, more efficient, giving humans back more time, driving costs down. There's a whole other great book on this that I'm going to do. Similar video to this called The Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth that describes this perfectly. So those with low skills won't be able to contribute meaningfully to the economy. 
This could be something we see today as EI, CERB, or the UBI that is just around the corner. If you can teach yourself how to solve problems, you have a bright career ahead of you. And think about it, this is how successful people are anyways. They manage to solve their own problems. All those unsuccessful family members, people you know, friends you know, they're really dependent on others or they are trying to solve somebody else's problems and it just seems like they can never really ever get a grasp on their own problems. In today's world, it will become easier for us to create assets outside of the government. One of the examples they describe in the book is cyber cash. They say it will play a pivotal role in cyber commerce consisting of encrypted numbers, unique, anonymous, verifiable. It will accommodate the largest transactions. It will also be divisible by just the tiniest fraction. It will be tradable at a keystroke in a multi-trillion dollar market. And essentially, this is exactly what we see today in Bitcoin, besides the trillion dollar market cap, of course. With new tech, it allows anyone to leave and earn income anywhere. Boundaries really aren't natural. They're an imaginary line created by institutions that are slowly losing power. And I want to read you something in this book that is pretty chilling, in my opinion. Those with the earnings, ability, and capital to meet competitive challenges of the information age will be able to locate anywhere and do business anywhere. With a choice of domiciles, only the most patriotic and stupid will continue to reside in high-tax countries. For this reason, it is expected that one or more Nation states will undertake covert action to subvert the appeal of transience. Travel could be effectively discouraged by biological warfare, such as an outbreak of a deadly epidemic. This could not only discourage the desire to travel, it could also give jurisdictions throughout the globe an excuse to seal their borders and limit immigration. Now, where have we seen this before? Let's just say you live in Canada, a high tax jurisdiction an outbreak of a deadly epidemic, discouraging travel across the nation, even limiting specific people who could not travel or cross the border. With new technology, you can pack all of your bags, put all of your assets into 12 words in your head, all outside of the government control and leave. Finding yourself in a smaller jurisdiction that is now attracting new citizens or customers, where you can open your phone, laptop, connect to a global cyber economy and begin again. It's important that all of us around the world can take advantage of this freedom. It is my hope that this video has brought you some information about the sovereign individual and some hope for the future. I know things can look bleak right now with tightening restrictions, high tax, censorship, the size of the government, the overreach. But with the fourth turning, we are entering the information age, which gives the power back to the individual from these large governments or entities. If you like this video, this format, let me know. I can create more of these. These are all my own notes. These are all my own drawings. I have read many books, have hundreds of pages of notes. If you like my sketch, you can purchase it here on my website. I mean, I think it'll make a great poster, but that's just me. And uh, there'll be other ones up there that I have done. Let me know what you thought of this book, uh, what anything else that you recommend, and uh, thanks for watching.